going on guys? So for this session, I am really excited. I'm sitting up here in Nicoa and we have a future legend in the making uh, decided to come interview with us. So, so Shane, say what's up, man. Tell everyone where you're from. What's up, everybody? Uh, my name's Shane. I am from Wisconsin, but I own a couple of businesses in northern Indiana, southern Michigan. So um, Benton Harbor down to South Bend, Indiana. So j just for fun, you guys want to see something awesome? Tell us what you do, Shane. I'm a wildlife uh, control operator, so. I knew um, I could make him do wait it. Wait a second. Uh, I am a, what did Paul call it? Oh wait, oh, a Special <laughs> Olympic CEO? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A Special Olympic CEO, that's exactly what I am. So, so, so for those of you guys who are at Energy, uh, well I guess when this will get published is a few weeks back, uh, Paul G got on stage and he uh, made an awesome comment and, uh, and, and he referred to, uh, he re I don't wanna get, in con it was in context, but about how all of us, even myself, as we're building businesses, we're really, really just part of Special Olympics as CEOs. And I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it so. struck home with a lot of people, man. Did so it? Was, yeah, it, it did, right? So we all get into it and we say, we, we self-appoint ourselves as CEOs, like you mm -hmm. said, and we're probably not qualified for the job, but the price is right, so we do it, right? <laughs> Dude, I, I honestly think that's like, you know, there's always these takeaways from these conferences. And I, I took a step back and I was like, I was like, holy shit, I can't believe you just said that. And yeah. then the crowd erupted. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that was the hilarious thing I've ever seen. So. It could have gone left or it could have gone right, but uh, yeah. it went right. So that was good. It was good. So, <laughs> well, well, listen, man. So we're here at Nicoa, right? Which I obviously am a huge supporter of Nicoa. Yeah. You're a huge supporter of Nicoa. Um, you know, you're a big believer in education. So, yeah. so let's, and I don't know how much you want to share here, but like, let's talk about your last year. Sure. Because like, I, when I think about, having a discussion with you like, I don't know, 16 months ago or something like that. Yeah. And you were like, go lucky, go make it happen, ready to go on your own, starting a business from scratch. And it's probably the hardest thing someone can do. Yeah. And like, look at you now, man. So like, let's talk about that, like the last year of your journey, man, because it's sure. been crazy. So um, August 1st of 2022, I opened the doors to my business. Um, I purchased Square Control franchises. So um, I'll back it up a little bit and say that I have a little bit of a jump start than, yeah. than somebody starting from scratch, scratch, but not much. Um, I got brand recognition, which is great, but that's pretty much what I have. Yeah. Um, so August 1st, 2022, I drove my company truck down to a campground in Elkhart, Indiana, and I started my business out of a tent in a campground. Really? Yeah. For the first month that I was in business, I ran it. I was, I made them put me in a campsite close enough to the clubhouse yeah. so that I could get Wi-Fi to my tent so I could do business from my tent at night. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait. So, so were you living in a tent? Not So I live in Wisconsin, yeah. wife and three kids in Wisconsin, but my territories are in Indiana and Michigan. So when I started, that was it. I had to be there, and I, I had just dumped a ton of money into you know buying a business, and I, I wanted to reinvest everything I was making into the business, so the cheapest thing to do was go rent a campsite. So just make it happen. Wow, dude. I, so I never knew that until right now. All right, <laughs> Most so, people so, don't. Most people don't. Dude, don't. that is so sick, dude. <laughs> like, I, you know what it makes me think about, and like, I, like, so we tell all these stories about like when you get into sales, and and I and people were, you know, I, I worked straight commission sales when I started, like yeah. not in our industry, in a different industry, but I remember like having like the holes in my shoes because I'd go see a hundred and everyone's like, you never had holes in your shoes. I'm like, no, 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 I actually did have holes in my shoes. And I actually felt it like a sense of pride that like, yeah. I didn't even want to get rid of my shoes. Yeah. Like I still wanted to wear them, still wanted to wear them until it got bad, but it makes me think about that. Yeah, I so, agree. So you lived in a tent. I did, I did. And For, now mind you, prior to this, I was making, 130, 140 grand a year yeah. as, as a top sales executive. And then I remember the, the, you know, a month later, I'm sleeping in a tent in another state trying to build a business. Gosh, I'm so <laughs> humbling, man. So, so, all right. So, you, so you're living in a tent, making phone calls from the tent, oh, getting yeah. Wi Fi from the clubhouse. Yeah. So, so let's continue the story, man. So, let's so go. I started there. Um, I, I gained a lot of traction when I first got there. I, I was lucky enough that I had worked for another franchise, yeah. of Critter Control, for a while. Um, so, I kind of knew how to, how to structure things a little bit. Um, but just getting out there, man. I was at the local Home Depot talking to people, handing out cards uh, for employees and customers. Um, I, I, I didn't do any door to door. I, if we, as we get further in the journey, I did it once and we're getting into that now. <laughs> yeah. But um, we started there and finally we made some money enough that I could upgrade from a tent to a hotel room. So I got a corporate <laughs> raid at a local comfort <laughs> suites. And for another 30 to 60 days, we did it out of uh, a comfort suites in Elkhart, Indiana. And then um, finally worked ourselves up into uh, getting a rental house. And then this past about six months ago, uh, five months ago now, we bought a house in my territory. So um, just 
Dude, working, so, so wait, I, I'm just like putting this whole story together. So you go from like, you're like, all right, man, I'm going to get a the tent. Then I'm going to get a rent by the week hotel place. Yep. Right? That's what you did. <laughs> not, not the best hotel in the world. No, but it doesn't matter, that's right? That's where we ate breakfast too. And it was like, they had these little plastic egg triangle thing. It was terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you ate them. But it was full. It was, it was fuel. That's Dude, that is hilarious. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so let's keep progressing. So you guys got your house on the family side. Let's talk about the business. So how'd the business go? So the house is actually on the business side. So again, I still live in Wisconsin. My yeah. family's still there. We have a house there. But so we bought a house. Essentially, I was looking for a property that yeah, I could both run the business and and have a couple people stay in. So I moved a couple of people down. Once we got into this and actually started to make some money and could hire some people, I brought a couple of friends of mine down from Wisconsin, moved them to Indiana. They stay in the house and rent it from me and um, and help me run the business. So, dude, I, I'm like sensing this like like fraternity like love life <laughs> yo guys let's all live in the house we got the trucks out back like live breathe die critical control right it's, is that what we're seeing listen so company culture it, to me is is incredibly important yeah. I, I i try to emulate my company after some great companies not like your own i mean it's so you're, you got an incredible company culture at Pass Daily, yeah. AAC Distributing, Tony and them have an incredible company culture there. So I'm learning from some of the best people, in my opinion, yeah. in the industry on how to build company culture. I see everybody that's working for you eat, sleep, breathe Pass Daily. <laughs> uh, the shoes on their, from the shoes on their feet to the hats on their head and everything in between. So that's awesome. So I'm trying to emulate that in my own business because obviously cool. it's successful. So. Yeah, so, yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, well, I mean, I figure if you feed people and you give them all their clothes, like, you win, right? <laughs> yes, right? they're never going to go anywhere. I'm, I'm, we're so, so, for those of you guys who are watching us, we literally have two of our team members right behind it. They're, like, laughing at, at me right now as I see it. They're completely decked out in Fest Daily gear. So, just yeah. FYI. <laughs> and so, yeah, you feed people, you give them clothes. Yeah, absolutely. You give them, yeah, you give them a house. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, man. So, company culture, like, breeding something like that, it isn't so much a fraternity house. It gets that way once in a while. And I yeah. got to say, hey, guys, let's chill. Um, um, but it's it's a good time, man. We uh, we enjoy working with each other. Uh, we enjoy our friendship outside of work. They understand the relationship once once work is going on. That you know. yeah. So okay. So so let's fast forward now. So yeah. we're today. So we're today. So how many guys you got working with you now? Six. Yeah. So I mean, and you may and I don't. I, I, you're so focused. You probably don't realize this, but you've probably in one year probably built. Probably one of the most success, conceptually one of the most successful companies in the country. You know that, right? I'm glad that other people tell me that because I don't feel that way. I don't yeah. think about it like that. I look back and I think, okay, we did, we did, and and it's public knowledge. So we did 1.1, million dollars in our first full year in business. <laughs> think about that, dude. It, I do. I never thought I'd spend as much money as I've spent. Yeah. I don't know where it went. Um, I do actually. Call Fraction. They'll they'll tell you where your money went. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyhow, so I, I do know where the money went, but nonetheless, man, it was it was an incredible journey. Um, but I don't, I, I try not to dwell on the past because it doesn't do a whole lot for my future. Yeah, I'm looking at this year and how are we going to do better this year? How can I change more lives and and hire more people and change their lives this year? Yeah, yeah. So all right, well let's let's talk about that. It's interesting. So so and and here's the thing is like obviously, you obviously know what I do, right? Like yeah. we build companies, right? Like yeah. and. And so there's a million methodologies. And, you know, and one of the things that I've also learned, though, is like when you have tons of experience, sometimes that holds you back, right? Yeah. And, so, and, and so sometimes it holds you back. So right now, you're coming into this year two, like, ready to go. Like, yeah. you're ready to go. <laughs> like, you're just going to sell a whole bunch of stuff this year, right? It's plan. And so, so what does the next year look like for you in your mind? So you're sitting in front of your team, and you're like, guys, here's what we're doing this year. Like, I don't even care about revenue. You guys are going to grow like crazy. But, like, how are you – what are you saying to these guys? Because this is what's going to impact some of these people watching this. Yeah. So, man, again, it really goes back to culture and bringing on the right people, putting them in the right seat. So my biggest goal and what I'm, is to kind of take a step back from yeah. working in my business and work on it from a 10,000-foot view. Yeah. And I've got a couple of guys. I'm blessed to have some incredible people working for me. Um, one that can kind of run the operation side, one that can kind of run the, the sales side. Um, so really just kind of trusting those people to make the right decision. I've trained them well enough that I fully believe that when I'm not there, they will make the right decision for me and my business, for my customers and for themselves. Because at the end of the day, if they succeed, so do I. And if I succeed, so do they. Yeah. So it, it, it's really, really... I guess humbling to have people that believe in me that much. <laughs> I don't believe in myself as much as they believe yeah. in me. So to have those people there and um, just just put the time and effort into those people 
to get them to a point where I can trust them to do those things is is what's going to set us apart. So I'm, I'm going to ask you a really tough question here, okay? And so I had this huge aha moment uh, during our conference, and I, I've shared it with some of you guys, but for the very first time in my life, and so I'm 43 years old right now, for the very first time in my life, like I, I started to feel proud, right? Okay. And so it was very interesting and proud because of the accomplishments that our team has and our clients and stuff like that, but I had never felt that feeling before, and it's it's pretty pretty powerful. Yeah. And so you just put in you just put forth one of the hardest years, probably one of the best years in in wildlife history, right? You That's and you crazy. still don't realize it, right? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> but how do you feel? Do you feel proud? Not yet. I really weird? don't. It's it's insane. I mean, my so I come from the humble beginnings, and I'll I'm gonna pause for a second because I'll get emotional about it. Um, my father raised me and my three sisters by himself wow. for the most part. Wow. So I come from blue collar background. I mean, I saw my dad. I mean, at night in between two cribs like this. Yeah, feeding my twin sisters. Wow, that's crazy. After ten hours at work, so coming from that and having him be proud of me, it's insane, dude. I, t- I do. I, 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 I don't understand, but I do understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. It's uh, wait, how old are you? How old are you now? Thirty six. Yeah, you. Uh, I bet it's amazing, dude. I, 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 it's I a can't, wild ride. Yeah, I can only, I can only imagine. He probably, he probably, and I don't know your dad, but I bet he sits back and he's like, holy crap. It's uh, it's pretty incredible, man. So him and my stepmom, um, they they support me wholly. I mean, I talked to them a lot about this decision before I made it. Yeah. And we were thirty days in. I was still living in the tent, and we took my dad took a look at the bank account and said, "And this is not the way to run your. Don't run your business by looking at your bank." Yeah, account. yeah, yeah, for I've sure. I learned that through some some good mentors. But um, he looked he looked at the bank account. And he said, "Dude, whatever you need, I'm in. I'm there. I've got your back." So. That was incredible to me. So having him be proud, like, it's, it's, I don't, it's hard for me to be proud of myself. I'm always looking, like, what am I going to do next? How do I improve? I'm, I'm very critical of myself, yeah. I guess. But to see other people have it and say it, it's like, wow, it's, I, I, you're right. I still don't realize it, man. You don't, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a, and, and I, think it's, I think when we look back at this five years from now, I think you're going to feel exactly the same way. <laughs> probably. <laughs> you're going to feel exactly the same way. You'll probably have, you know, you'll probably have the largest critical control franchise in the country at that point. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So I work with some other guys who run franchise companies yeah. and some are the best, some are number one. Yeah. And Paul Alley. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Yeah. So Incredible. some of you guys, so you guys know Paul. Yeah. So Paul's number one, right? Yeah. And I can tell you this, if I sit, if Paul, well, Paul, we did an interview with Paul not too yep. long ago. Paul still today can't believe he's number one. Like all, he still wants to go to work every day. Yeah. Right. He still wants to go to work every day. He still wants to work hard every day. You know, and and he's twenty five years down the road, right? And right. it's pretty pretty amazing, man. So I agree. So well, listen, man. So so I've got a couple of other funny questions sure. for you, but before I ask those, like, is there anything you want to share with people that are in your shoes or people that are maybe they're running hundred million dollar companies and they just need to be brought back to earth a little bit? Is there anything sure. you want to tell somebody about the way you feel right now that may be impactful to them? Yeah, man. All, all I can really say is invest in your people. Uh, you know, it's, that is the number one thing that anybody that is anything in this industry or is part of this industry that from the $100 million guys to people that are, are in my shoes or people that are starting a business and are going to surpass me by, by millions of dollars, it's, it's invest in your people, invest in yourself. I, I think it was Jonas that, that told me. And I think it came from you. I'm sure, I'm sure it did. I don't know. He's, um, he's pretty sharp. Man. He is. He is a good dude. Um, that uh, he told me a story about a million dollar horse and what you should feed a million dollar horse. And basically what it boils down to is investing in yourself, you know, and, and investing, you know, you are the million dollar horse. I, personally, I don't feel like that. I feel like my people are. Yeah. <laughs> They're my million dollar horse. So I'm going to invest and feed them, you know, the million dollar food and the so, so I can so. tell you this, I've never had that discussion with Jonas. Okay. And and honestly, like hearing you say it, it makes super logical sense. And like the one thing I'd wonder is like, to your point, is like if you look around at your people, are your people also a stable of call it the million dollar horses? Sure. And so if they are, you should feed them, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. So all right, man, a couple fun questions. Let's do it. All right. You ready? Always. Sure? Never. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. So, because I'm a foodaholic, okay. If you had to pick your one meal, what is it? Oh man, I'd be honest with you. I went to a place while here in Texas called Taste of Texas, about I don't know, like 12 minutes from here. 
We went the first night we're here. We went back last night. <laughs> Not a cheap place to go, um, but probably the best steak I've ever had. So I'm a I'm a meat guy. Um, actually, right now exclusively yeah it's um, exactly. through a carnivore diet but um so so steak is my like number one go-to i love it so, so you know I, as i asked the question i realized it was a stupid question because you were living in a comfort and eating triangle eggs Listen. and you were like loving it saying this is energy hey, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes man I, it's I, yeah food is fuel to me it's not an experience so i'm not a foodie by yeah. any means but um so, but if I had to choose one thing to eat the rest of my life, it'd probably be that. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. So, so if you had to make, okay, one last question. Sure. If you had to say this was the greatest decision I've made in my professional career, what would it be? Trusting myself to make the right decisions and knowing that I'm going to make some wrong ones, but the wrong ones don't define me, the right ones do. And what I do with the wrong ones really defines my character. So someone talked to me about it one time. It, it wasn't in that context, but knowing that I'm going to make wrong decisions is okay. Yep. And I can always pivot if I need to was probably the best, like, one of those aha moments, I guess. That Dude, I, I would tell you that I think that's probably one of the most impactful things someone can hear. So we run a rule, and, you, and no one ever really hears me talk about this, but we run a rule in our consulting business. And the rule is, is that if we're right one out of ten times, companies become mega companies. I've seen it. If we're one out of 10, <laughs> right? So if, if we're white, one out of 10, they become mega companies. And um, one out of every 10 decisions we have to make. And and it's true. And so I think you nailed it, dude. So appreciate well, it. What question, you have any questions for me, man, before we wrap this thing up? Man, for maybe somebody in my shoes, right? Yeah. Or somebody looking to be in my shoes. Getting, yep. Getting to a million dollars is awesome. That's great. Yep. Like again, it's in my past it, at this point. It, it feels weird when you you wake up and you're like, okay, that's done. Yeah, Isn't that weird. Yeah, yeah, it's incredibly weird um, to think about how okay, how do I get to five? Right? Yep. How do I get to twenty? So um, all of those take steps. There's plateaus. You talk about it at your conferences. Mm -hmm. You're probably yep. talking about it on your sessions before. But, yep. Um, what is one of the most impactful things I can do to to go from one to five, where where, so, is, where do I falter? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's I, I don't think it's one to five, and so if that seems you know we we historically as business owners we want to like give these like numbers right, sure. and every company is tremendously different. And um, actually, uh, last like last week for our conference, I walked into one of the big mastermind groups and like yeah. we surprised everybody, and it's the first question out of everyone's mouth. I was like, and it, and it makes sense, right? Yep. So here's the thing, is I think the first thing we have to realize is that we're not, we're not chasing a prize, right? Okay. So we're not chasing a prize. We're chasing like your desired life and the desired outcome. And so business owners have to realize that is that a $5 million company that doesn't make any money is way less than a $250,000 one route route guy who's making 160,000 bucks a year. Right. Absolutely. And so we have to realize that. And so, so revenues, revenue is a measuring stick. Okay. I think the more important component is that if you want to go from 1 million to 5 million, or let's say 1 million to whatever, let's just say 5 million, sure. is the first step is you have to get to $1 million, $1. Yeah. Then you have to get to $1,500,000, right? Yeah. And you have to incrementally do it. And, and, and there's, no, there's no secret sauce to it. Right. And you heard, the, you heard the top CEOs in the world talk about this last week. Well, a couple yeah, weeks ago. Absolutely. And, all, and everything they all said was keep it stupid simple, stay laser focused, and, and, and don't deviate from your plan. They all said the same thing they if did. you listened. Every one of them. And every one of them said, don't chase revenue. Every one of them said, focus on route efficiency. And everyone said to just sell. Yeah. And keep your product simple. That's what they all said. Yeah, I agree. And, and in so, different ways. And so frankly, I mean, dude, like, look, like we make money building processes, right? Like, yep. If for companies and implementing. That's how my companies make money. And we tell companies all the time, the simpler, the better. Don't overthink it. Because if you overthink it, you're reinventing a wheel. And reinventing a wheel causes education. Education is expensive. Right. And right. so <laughs> why reinvent anything? Sure. That's my thoughts. That's awesome, man. Is that cool? I, yeah, I appreciate that. Any other questions for me there? You're good. I think that's it, my friend. I'm sure cool. I have many other questions yeah. I'm going to ask you over the next year, but whatever you need, man. Like, I, I'm, I'm excited about your future, man. So, I so appreciate I that. appreciate you coming out and doing oh, this, for man. Sure. So uh, I hope the audience loves this today. I hope so and, too. Uh, and I appreciate taking the time, man. There's yes, a lot of things to do. And if anybody wants to to network with me, I'm I'm open to anything. So feel free to reach out just, if you got questions. Just not during prime selling time. This guy needs to sell some business. <laughs> so thankfully enough, I've got uh, some guys that I've I've invested in that can do it for me now. But I'm definitely going to be out there. There's no question. It's I love awesome. it too much to leave it. It's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. we'll, well, we'll catch you all in the next session, man. Thanks again Thanks for joining, again. bro. Appreciate it, man. Yeah.